toes together, elongate through the spine. Bring the palms in front of the chest. I'll try to firm in Mula Bandha and Uddiyana Bandha. Relax the face, relax the jaw. And start to engage in Ujjayi breathing. Chant the opening mantra, expressing our gratitude to the practice, to those who've kept that practice alive. We're not going to practice um, call and repeat, we'll just chant together, or you can remain silent. Third 
one. Inhale, exhaling. Inhaling, exhale, going back. Inhale, open the chest, belly in. Exhale, downward facing. One. Two, three, four, and five. Look forward, inhale, hop forward, long back, belly in. Exhale, over the legs. Inhale, strong legs all the way up. And samastihi. Inhale to raise the arms. Exhale over the legs. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, open the chest, gaze to the nose. Exhaling over the toes. One. Two, three, four, and five. Inhale to come forward and then exhale, fold, and let's pause here for a moment to understand about where we can place our hands. So if you notice your upper back here, to press the hands on the floor, press them down and you might feel some tension, slight tension in the neck. Whereas if you lift your fingertips up off the floor, swivel the elbows to point towards the back of the mat and then hook your shoulders on the back. Glue the shoulder blades onto the back so they're reaching a little bit away from the ears maintain that and see if you can squeeze your body to your legs. Okay, so you want to keep the neck in line with the rest of the spine, not press the face towards the legs. So, and elbows in. In, yeah. Inhale, come all the way up to stand. Exhale, arms down. Bend the knees, inhale, raise the arms, Utkatasana. Exhale, over the legs. Notice again here what's happening in the upper back, the neck, and see if you want to keep the fingertips off the floor. It doesn't matter, you can put the hands down. For me, when I'm doing that right now, I feel there's a little bit of tension along my neck, so I tend to keep my fingertips off the floor. Inhale, raising up. Exhale, press the hands, go back, chaturanga. Inhale, urdhva mukha. Exhale, adho mukha. Turn the left heel, step the right foot, virabhadrasana A. Try to find the alignment within those movements. Exhale, place the hands back to the floor, step back, chaturanga. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, over the toes. Turn the right heel, step the left foot just to the thumb. Inhale, as you rise up. Exhale, smoothly, even breath all the way down. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha. Exhale, Adho Mukha. Find your steady gaze, still the body, still the mind, and concentrate on your breathing. Two, three, four, and five. Bend the knees, inhale, step or hop long back, Exhale over the legs, 
pause here. Bring awareness to the neck, the shoulders, the upper back. Bend the knees. Inhale, raise the arms. Exhale, Samastiti. Second one. Inhale, bend the knees, raise the arms, knees together. Exhale, over the legs. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, hop back, Chaturanga. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha. Gaze to the nose. Exhale, Adho Mukha. Inhale, right foot forward, smooth movements all the way up, Virabhadrasana. Exhale, all the way back down, Chaturanga. Inhaling, exhaling. Inhaling, left foot comes forward, all the way up, gaze to the thumbs. Exhale, back down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhaling, and exhaling here. One, two, three, four, and five. Inhale, coming forward, long spine. Exhale, over the legs. Inhale, bend the knees. Exhale, Samastiti. Let's do one more like this. Inhaling, Utkatasana. Exhale, folding over. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, Virabhadrasana A, right side. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhaling, exhaling. Inhaling, smooth movements all the way up. Exhaling, Chaturanga. Open the chest, gaze to the nose. Exhale, over the toes. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Inhale, hop forward, long back. Exhale, over the legs. Inhale, bend the knees, raise the arms up. Exhale, Samastihi. Fingertips into Uddiyana Bandha. Bend the knees, hop the feet apart, open chest, belly in. Exhale, folding over, take the toes. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Padangushtasana. One. Two. Now, now you can open your feet a little wider. Three. Gaze to the nose. Four. And five. Inhale, straighten the arms, lift the chest. Exhale, slide the hands under the feet. Open the chest again, belly in. Exhale, folding down. Gaze to the nose, long back, neck relaxed. Two. Three. Four. And five. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, hands to the hips. Inhale, all the way to stand. Exhale, feet together. Bend the knees, step or hop out to the side. Uttita Trikonasana, right foot points, left toes in. Open the palms. 
exhale over the right side. Bring your left toes angled in a little bit. Elbow deep, more, yeah, and straighten your front foot. Two, three, four, five. Press the feet. Inhale out as you rise up, turning with that inhale, exhaling into the second side. Gaze to the upper thumb. One. Two, three, four, and five. Press the feet. Inhale all the way up, turning with that same inhalation. Left arm up. Exhale, go straight forward. Bring the right hand, the left hand on the outside of the right foot. Parvrita Trikonasana. Trying to use the pelvis as the steadying point. Press that back here. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Exhale, gaze down. Inhale, windmill the arms, coming all the way up, turning to the other side. Exhale, going straight forward into the second side. Your pelvis is your steady point. Your legs are your roots to ground. And then you try to turn the chest, open to the side, gazing to that upper thumb. One. Two, three, four, five. Exhale, look down. Inhale, windmill the arms. And samastiti. Bend the knees. Step or hop the feet apart. Longer stance, right foot points. Bend that front knee, open the palms, and slide your torso over the right side. Left arm slides over the ear at an angle, gazing to the inner elbow, or maybe eventually up to that hand. One, press the back foot into the floor. Two, three, four, And five, press the feet, inhale as you rise up, turning with that same inhalation, exhale into the second side. Feel Mula Bandha, two, three, four, and five. Press the feet, inhale all the way up, turning all the way to the first side. And we're going to go to Parvrita Parjva Konasana. So it's a spinal twist. You can keep the heel off the floor, turn towards your right knee. Try to turn the spine, maybe the elbow on the outside of the knee, or maybe the hand on the outside of the leg. Right arm spins over the head. Trying to make a nice straight line from the back heel all the way up to those fingertips. It's about two, three, four, and five. Exhale, gaze down. Inhale, spinning all the way to the other side. Exhale into the second side. One, two, three, four, and five. Gaze 
down. Inhale, windmill the arms as you rise up. Exhale, samastiti. Bend the knees, open out, prasarita A. Inhale, chest open. Exhale, go all the way forward. Place the hands on the floor, shoulder width apart. Inhale, long back, belly in. Exhale, slide the hands back. Place the crown towards the floor. Try to find your chaturanga arms. So this informs Uttanasana arms, palms on the floor. It's informing that pose. So feel like your arm bones are in the socket, shoulder blades on the back, sternum reaching away from the belly. Yeah, good. And then press the hands down and forward into the floor and maybe maintaining that firm shoulder girdle, maybe tilt the pelvis and go a little bit deeper. It's about three, four, and five. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, hands to the hips. Inhale all the way up. Exhale at the top. Inhale to open the arms. Exhale, hands on the hips. Inhale, chest open, belly in. Exhale, going over the tops of the femurs. Head down. Prasarita Padottanasana B. Gaze to the nose. Two. Three. Four. And five, press the feet, inhale all the way up, exhale here. Inhale, arms to the sides, exhale, interlace the fingers, relax the shoulders, exhale, folding down, keeping the belly in, allow the arms to come over the head. Staying here, breathing fully. Find the sense of ease here, so it shouldn't feel forceful. Two, three, four, and five. Press the feet, inhale, come up, leading with the chest. Exhale, hands to the hips. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, halfway down, take the big toes. Inhale, straighten the arms, straighten the back. Strong legs, exhale, folding over. Bringing the wrists over the toes, the elbows towards the wrists. Broaden the upper back, broaden across the collarbones. Two, three, four, and five. Inhale, straighten the arms. Exhale, hands to the hips. Inhale, all the way up. And exhale, back to the front. Open the arms to the sides, thumbs pointing downwards. Bend at the elbows, bring the fingertips towards each other, and see if you can slide them up your back. Bend the knees, right foot comes back, left toes in, right foot points. Align both the hips to the end of the mat. Feel the belly pulling in, chest is staying open, and then exhale, start to tilt yourself forward as if you're going to bring the back parallel to the floor. Slide the sternum forward, slide the occiput forward, back of the head forward. And then if you can maintain all that, fold a little deeper. One, two, three, four, Five, press the feet, inhale, come up, turning all the way to the first side, the 
sorry, second side. <laughs> Align the hips, chest open, belly in. Exhale, folding forward. Imagine the spine is centered between the two legs. So the spine is not coming over that front leg. It's coming like it's growing from the pelvis in its natural place. That's about two, three, four, and five. Press the feet. Inhale, come up. Feet come parallel. Exhale, back to the front. Release the arms. Find your samastidihi. Good samastidihi. Bring the right heel in front of you on the floor. Anchor your femur bone into the pelvis. And then you're going to inhale, straighten your right arm out. Lift your leg and see if you can get your toe. So you might need to bend your knee and get your toe. And then anchor your shoulder blade on the back, soften the right elbow. And if your knee is bent, think about the center of the heel arcing forward and up. So even if the knee doesn't straighten, doesn't matter, you could hold something like this and breathe here. Two, try to keep the pelvis level. Three, some of you, and drop your right sitting bone. Four, five. You can either keep the legs straight or bend, open out to the side, feel like your right sitting bone feels heavy to the, towards the floor, and then follow the horizon and gaze over the left side. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale, back to the center. Try to use your arm, try to lift your leg up a little higher. Maybe you bend forward. Inhale, lift the chest, keep the leg up high, and then let go. Fingertips into Uddiyana Bandha. Straighten the ankle, but pull the toes back. Three, drop the right side. Four, and five, and release. <laughs> One of the hardest poses in the whole series, <laughs> even if it's at the beginning. Okay, find neutral spine. So you should have a little lumbar curve, belly in, left heel forward, pull up the leg, reach your arm out, and see if you can catch your toe. And you can do it with the knee bent. If the knee is bent, center of the heel, trying to arc forward as the left sitting bone feels heavy. So it's going to force you to use Mula Bandha and Uddiyana Bandha. Find your steady gazing point. Some of you might be straightening the knee. You see. Then open from the hip joint. You're externally rotating the thigh bone, opening to the opposite side. Again, allowing that left sitting bone to feel nice and heavy. Okay, so if you can change the gaze, you do so. It's about three, four, five. Inhale, back to the center, back to the front. See if you can use your arm to lift the leg a little bit higher. Maybe you tilt forward, keeping the chest open. Inhale, come back up, and then let go. One, gaze to the toe or find a gazing point somewhere on the floor. Three, four, five. Release, shake up the legs. Okay, so let's work towards Ardha Bada. Okay, so. Right knee turns out, keep the belly in, hips forward, start to pick up that foot, close the back of the knee. Take your hands like a cradle, reach under the ankle, and then pull the heel towards you to close fully the back of the knee. 
So you can stay here or start to reach your right arm around. Maybe take your arm, maybe take your toe. One or the other. Then soften the knee down. Keep the belly in, keep the spine long. Exhale, start to fold forward. Maybe when you fold forward, it's a little easier to get the toe. If not, you stay where you are and eventually you release the left hand down if you can't get, yeah, even if you can't get your toe, you can let go of your left hand. Yeah. Uh, that's the other one. Yes, exactly. Good. Up to three, four. You can stay standing if it feels better for you. Five. Press the standing foot. Inhale, lift the chest. Bend the standing leg. Inhale, come up with the leg a little bent. Exhale, release safely. Second side. Aligning our hips, turn the left knee out, pick up that foot, you're going to cradle underneath the ankle but keeping the ankle straight and then try to close the back of the knee first. So even keep the knee wherever it is and then use your right hand, left arm comes around, maybe it takes your opposite arm. Okay, And then from there, soften down the knee but pick up the lower belly, pick up the sternum, pick up the low back ribs. So you can stay here or start to tilt forward. You can soften the standing leg. Maybe at some point you're able to get the toe. Find your point that you're looking at, place the fingers. Keep the chest open. You're only folding a little deeper if you can keep the back nice and long. It's probably about three. You're also welcome to put both hands on the floor. And like Beatrice, I would use a block and put two hands on the floor, yeah. And then try to keep the neck long. Okay. Inhale first, lift the chest. Exhale in place, soften the knee, and only think about that standing foot. As you come up, you just think about the foot, you come up, and exhale, release here. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> come back to the front of the mats. We're going to come directly to the floor so we can do more things in the second half of the series. Inhale, raise the arms. Exhale, fold over. Back of the neck long. Inhale, long back, belly in. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, over the toes. So, let's try something here. You're going to come forward and make this rounded plank. So you feel like you're rounding your upper back. Squeeze the fingertips onto the floor. And then, see, you feel the belly working. Keep all those actions, like you're making lots of space between you and the floor. And then keep that, but tilt back, bend the knees, and look as if you're going to look through the wall in front of you. So you have to feel like you're looking as far forward as possible. And then all at the same time, bend the knees and come through. Jumping through. <laughs> Good jobs. <laughs> okay, Dandasana. Straighten the legs, flatten the feet like they're on the floor. Separate the heels a tiny bit, yeah. Good, hands beside you. Keep the chest open, back long, and maybe the chin comes to this little notch if you can keep the back long. Gaze down the nose, one. Two, three, four, and five. Exhale, lean forward, take your big toes, ankles, or shins. Inhale, lift and lengthen out of the waist like the torso's re getting longer. And then exhale, maybe fold forward a little bit. 
and see what's feeling right for you. Have a look, your kneecaps are pointing straight up towards the ceiling. One, find a little bit of ease there. Two, keep the feet flat, crisscross, watch your feet. Three, your feet should look like you're standing evenly on the floor. Four, so you're using the inner lines of the legs. Five, inhale, lift, lengthen the spine. Exhale, take the sides of the feet, and from here you can also bend the knees. Open the chest, lean forward. Notice what's happening in your neck, your upper back, lower back. Make sure that you feel like you're making space. There's this sense of you're challenging your body, but as you challenge it, there's also this sense of ease within that challenge. So you're not challenging it to the point where it's feeling really uncomfortable. Three, four, five. Inhale, lift the chest. You can either do the same thing again or reach beyond your feet, holding your wrist. Open the chest, get long. Exhale, fold. One, two, three. Pull the shoulder blades away from the ears. Bend the elbows out to the sides like you're pulling the baby so baby toe side of the hand, of the feet back. Four, five. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, release, slide the hands behind you. As the elbows go back, the shoulders come forward. Point the toes, the heels are slightly apart. Press into the hands, press into the heels. Lift yourself up, Parvottanasana. One, oh, that's good, Elodie. Two, three, drop your inner thighs, and then inner thighs down. And you're a little bit lopsided. Lift your left side up, left hip up. Yeah, three, bellies in, four, chin in, Beatrice. Keep your chin, look down on the legs, yeah. Exhale, release. Crossing at the ankles, press the hands into the floor, try to make yourself this little ball, and then lean forward, try to bring your feet through, you can swing, yes, 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 oh, excellent, keep, don't move your hands, <laughs> yes, good, and chaturanga, open the chest, upward dog, exhale, over the toes, downward facing, make that dome, Bend the knees, look forward, trying to keep as much of that dome as possible as you come through. Okay, half lotus. <laughs> Turn the right foot out from the hip joint. Lean back. You need to lean back to make space in the hip joint. And then take from underneath, bring the heel, press the heel towards you. Okay, so the back of the knee is completely closed. And then all at the same time, you lift up and let the foot come down wherever it comes. Good. Reach the right arm out. You can hold with your left hand. Thumb goes down. You're trying to keep the chest still pointing forward. As you reach around, take the opposite arm, or some of you might get your toe. But try not to distort the spine and the pelvis and the thoracic cage and everything to try to get that toe. So this all stays forward. So if it doesn't happen, it doesn't matter. Keep the sternum lifted. Exhale, go forward. Something like that. If you have your toe, then you reach your left hand forward. Otherwise, you can keep working on the forward bend. Keep the lower belly in. One. Two. Wrap that right shoulder forward, Beatrice. Three, four, lower two, wrap your right shoulder forward. Five, inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, you need to lean back to protect your knee as you release. 
Keep leaning back, belly in, bend the left leg, pull the heel towards you, and then all at the same time, sitting up straight. Keep that feeling like you're getting long in the waist. Reach your left arm out, thumb needs to point down, protect that shoulder, bend at the elbow. Both sides of the chest still pointing the same direction. Maybe you tilt forward a little bit from here. If you have your toe, you can reach the side of the foot. Open and exhale, fold. One. Two. If it's hurting the knee for any reason, you should come out. Three, pull the chin in a little. Four and five. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, release, leaning back to let go of that foot. Crossing at the ankles, fingertips pressing into the floor. So the fingers are kind of curling like that. And then lean forward, picking yourself up, bringing yourself through jumping or stepping back, chaturanga, upward dog, downward facing, bend the knees, you're going to see if you can jump through keeping the right knee bent back. So all the principles are the same, trying to make your, that dome reach away from the floor, belly in, looking forward, but then as you jump, your right knee stays bent back. <laughs> Almost, almost, good. Okay, and then once you're there, if you didn't manage, just like find your leg in the right place. Once you're there, find the alignment. Okay, so that both femur bones are parallel and that front knee is pointing straight forward. So you don't want it to be like caving inwards. Okay, so to protect your knee. And let's try this. You're gonna put the, bring those L-shaped hands and put them on the top of the thighs, press into the tops of the thighs, and with that pressure down, feel like if your sternum can lift up. So your thoracic cage is reaching away from the pelvic floor, and then the pelvic floor kind of sucks up and lifts. And then, keeping the hands where they are, start to tilt yourself forward. Keep that pressure down, but feel like you're you're lengthening forward. Some point, releasing, taking whatever bind you're holding. Open the chest with an inhale. Exhale, going into your pose. One, gaze down, find a gazing point. Two, three, press those right toes into the floor. Four, and five. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, release. Let's jump back here. So take your hands mid-thighs, lift your right knee, lean forward, and hop back. Lower down. Inhale, open the chest. Exhale, over the toes. Again, make this doming feeling, feel the belly in, try to look forward, and then as you're coming through, you're bending that left knee back. Almost. <laughs> okay, and then rearrange the skin, the muscles, so they're in that safer, comfortable place. Then let's take our L-shaped hands again, Press the tops of the thighs into the floor and use that pressure down to get some leverage to get taller. Tilting forward here, keeping the sternum open, and then at some point you decide when you're going to change your bind. From there, get one last inhale to lengthen and exhale, fold. Keep the back of the neck long, find a gazing point, turn inwards and listen to that breathing. Two, three, 
four, and five. Inhale, chest opens. Exhale to release. Place the hands midway down the thighs. Use your fingertips. Press these toes into the floor. Knee lifts up. And then you kind of have to come into that dome place again. Like you're doming your chest. And then slide the foot back. Yeah. And chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Bend the knees, coming through. Janushasana A. Externally rotating that right foot, slide the foot up onto the inner thigh. Make sure both hips are aligned forward. Get that length, take a bind. Open the chest with an inhalation. Exhale, fold. Feel like you're broadening the upper back, broadening across the collarbones. Back of the neck feels long. One, two. Feel like the sternum is reaching away in the same direction as the rest of the spine. So it's not necessarily reaching down. Four. And five, straighten that foot. Yeah. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, release. Lean back. And we're going to change legs. Externally rotating the second thigh. Lifting up. Let the sitting bones fall down naturally. The knee and the toes are pointing up. Open the chest. Reach your bind. Inhaling. Exhaling. One. Find the sound of Ujjayi. Two, three, four, five. Inhale, long back. Exhale, release. Crossing at the ankles. Lift, coming through, and chaturanga. Open the chest, over the toes, bend the knees, coming through, Janu Shishasana B. So it all starts the same way, foot is on the inner thigh, trying to keep those toes so they're pointing towards the other toes. So the top of the foot kind of comes flat like this, if possible. Almost like you're opening the foot in Baddha Konasana, a little bit kind of like that. Okay, then, and if that's not working, straighten the ankle, point the toes like this. Okay, lift the sitting bones, slide yourself forward, and sit on that heel. Yeah, that right knee can swivel in a little bit. Try to align your hips forward. So feel like your left leg is pulling back and coming into the hip socket right hip is swiveling forward. Find that length in the waist, tilt yourself forward, take your bind, and you use the bind actually. If you have, if you've got your foot, there's a reason for it. You're pulling your left arm back so that the baby toe side of the foot is pulling back. Okay, and then you push the ball of the foot forward into your hand okay so you're using this as not just like oh place to hold on to right okay so elena you can lift your hands so that your hands are behind the top of the foot and fold inhale lift the chest exhale release coming off that foot and changing sides. So the foot is trying to flatten at the top, like Baddha Konasana, you know, when you open your feet like this, you're kind of doing the same thing. Lift the pelvis, tilt forward. This knee can turn in a little bit. I was taught 85 degrees, but you know, roughly something like that. 
and then bring that right leg back like you're gonna slide that whole right leg back you feel the pelvis anchoring and then this left side comes forward and then feel like you're coming out of your waist so you're lifting up then you tilt forward so if you're doing this bind right the straight leg is the straight arm and then you come and you get your wrist and then you're right you're holding that bind but your right arm is pulling back against that hand and so as you do so then the whole baby side baby toe side of the leg comes up and then it lengthens the inner line inhale lift and lengthen exhale release coming off that foot crossing at the ankles pressing into the fingertips lifting yourself up coming through chaturanga open the chest over the toes and when you're ready coming through for Janushasana C. Okay, so if you have any knee problems, you're just going to come and sit on your feet like this to stretch out the feet, okay? Because this can be really hard on the knees and you could even open the knees like that and hold something like this with the knees spread and the feet in the position. Otherwise, if you're gonna try, you could also sit on a block, okay? There's many, many versions of this. So if you know that you're a little tighter, I would sit on the block right now. Then you bend your right knee and it has to externally rotate. So the knee is coming a little out to the side. You're leaning back, take your left hand to your foot and then bring your right arm under. Try to close the back of the knee as much as possible and then pull those toes back. So you're flexing the toes back. The same arm as leg, yeah. <laughs> and then you can lift your right sitting bone a little bit and then try to bring the heel forward. And then you're trying to get that foot high onto the thigh and toes on the floor. So something like this to start with. And then from there, you have to watch what's happening in the knee. It should not really feel painful, okay? Then you can kind of lift and you're like, oh yes, okay, this is where it feels good. So if you notice for me, I don't think that it feels good when my foot is perpendicular to the floor. I feel like it's twisting in my knee and doesn't feel good. So I keep my foot at a little bit of an angle like this so I don't injure my knees. And then lift the chest, maybe go forward. The heel is pushing into Uddiyana Bandha. Okay, so Jhana Shashasana B showed us Mula Bandha. Jhana Shashasana C is showing us Uddiyana Bandha. And folding down. Feel like your sternum is sliding forward. The occiput behind the head is also sliding forward. Find your gazing point. The next inhale, lift up. Exhale to release, lean back. So you give your knee the space to come out comfortably. And then same thing, you're leaning back, externally rotating, taking your right hand to that foot, using your left fingertips to pull those toes back. Lift the left sitting bone and let the toes come down. Okay, so you're flexing your toes back. And then from here, this is where it can get dangerous if you go too fast, okay? If you force it, it might go ting, something weird in the knee. So at this point, you can lift up, pay attention, what's going on in my knee? Mm, feels okay, okay, so I sit down. This heel is pushing into the thigh to keep space in the knee joint. Keep the ribs up, tilt yourself forward, Take your bind, exhale into the pose. Feel the back of the neck is long. Feel like you can breathe freely. Slide the sternums up. Sternum up, occiput up. 
Bring your shins in a little bit, Beatrice. Chin, yeah. Good. Inhale, opening. Exhale, releasing. Crossing at the ankles and lifting yourself through. And step or hop back, chaturanga. Inhale, chest comes open. Exhale, over the toes. Bending the knees, hopping through. And see if you can keep your feet off the floor when you hop through for Navasana. <laughs> okay. Then straighten the legs, straighten the arms. One. Keep the chest open, two, three, four, five. Cross at the ankles, pull yourself into this little ball, place the fingers, lift yourself. Lower down, straighten the legs. One, two, three, four, five. Cross the opposite ankle. Pull yourself in, press your fingertips, try to lift. Third one, one. Try to align your kneecaps. Three, four, five. Cross changing ankles, use the fingertips, lift. Fourth one, one, two, <laughs> Three, straighten parallel arms. Four, five, cross switching ankles, pull in, fingertips, lift. Don't let the feet touch, feet can't touch, even if the bum doesn't lift. Last one, one, two, three, four, five, cross, press, Lean and try to come through and jump through. Oh, Elena got kicked out. Let her back. Chaturanga, upward facing, downward facing. <laughs> Welcome back, Elena. <laughs> and make your little bit of a dome. Hop through. Straighten your legs. We're going to lie down for Parangushtasana, Supta Parangushtasana. And you're going to lie down, bring the back of the head onto the floor. Feel like the neck is level, like you're in Samastitihi here. Pick up the right leg, take your toe. Left hand on the thigh, you can point those lower toes. And then you're using your arm, you're using your shoulder blade to pull your leg towards yourself, tuck the chin, curl the head, curl the upper back off the floor. Holding here, one, two, three, four, and five. As you let the head come down, Turn the head so your left ear is on towards the floor. Externally rotate the right leg and open the right leg out to the side. One, two, trying to bring the pelvis level. Three, four, five. Inhale all the way back up. Chin in. Exhale, lift the chest. Inhale, head down. Exhale, leg down. Inhale, lift the left leg. Exhale, roll yourself up. Pull your leg towards you. Right hand on the thigh. One, two, Try to keep the pelvis level. Three, four, five. Exhale as you place the head down. Put the right ear towards the floor. Externally rotating at the hip joint as you let the left leg come out. 
Find your side gazing point. Two, three, four, five. Inhale, the leg comes up. Exhale, the chest lifts. Inhale, the head down, leg down. And then you're going to see if you can do Chakrasana, the backward somersault. If you've never done it before, just rock up to sit and do a vinyasa like this. Let's see what's going on. So if you know Chakrasana, you do the Chakrasana. Chaturanga, Upward Dog, Downward Dog. Inhale, hopping through. Hands on the thighs, roll yourself down. Exhaling. Inhale, bring the legs over the head. And you're going to take your toes back. Is that okay? Can you do that? Yeah. Take your toes. And then, so everybody try to crisp off. See if you can bring your hands to your feet and hold your toes. Take the toes, hold the toes like, like this. Yeah, everybody's there. And then you're going to make some attempts to roll up with the legs straight. So you have to use your belly. Inhale, try to roll up. You're probably going to roll back, but just, just try a couple times. Try to roll up. Yes, excellent. Yes. <laughs> Great job, Beatrice. Good. And then you're trying to make a B. After you try a couple times, we'll then bend the knees and then come up. And you can also hold your ankles like this. Yeah. And open your chest and like you're making a nice V shape. Hold, hold here. Yeah. Even here. Maybe you can. Yeah. Good. So you're holding that. It's five breaths. After your five breaths, cross at the ankles, put the hands down, inhale, lift, exhale, jump, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog, exhale, downward dog. Bend your knees, inhale to come through, hands are on the thighs, exhale all the way down. Inhale, the legs over the head again. But this time you're holding the outsides of the feet. Okay, so if that's not possible, hold your ankles or even your shins or behind the knees. And then from here, once again, you're trying to inhale, roll up. So you can try a couple times with the legs straight. If it's not working, it doesn't matter. Just come up with bent knees. And then from here, yeah, <laughs> even let go and just roll up. <laughs> Then from here, so you start in your V, it's an inhale to open, then the elbows, keep the chest lifted, and you're trying to pull yourself forward. So you can go like here, like that. Okay, so you're trying to pull the legs and the chest towards one another. Good job. Anchor the shoulder blades. And when you're ready, inhale, come back into the V. So you open, exhale, release, cross at the ankles, fingertips into the floor, inhale, lift, exhale, jump, chaturanga. Inhale, open the chest, exhale, over the toes. Once again, coming through, and now we're going to talk about Setu Bandhasana. Okay, so Setu Bandhasana is a really advanced pose. It's the end of primary series. It's the last pose of primary series, but I think it's way harder than half of second series. Okay, so um, it's considered one of the like um, gatekeepers, right? So it strengthens the neck, but it can also really hurt the neck. Oh. Beatrice left. Let's bring her back. <laughs> it's internet issues today. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down the lower body and the upper body. So first we're going to look at the lower body. 
Beatrice, glad you're back because we're talking about the pose you wanted to listen to, to talk about. So we bring our feet kind of in this Charlie Chaplin position, but it's not really real Charlie Chaplin. It's just an, a softer version of Charlie Chaplin so that in fact, if you were to look at your feet, your foot and your um, tibia would be at a right angle, okay? So something like that. So I hope you guys can see on the camera. So my feet are not here. Okay, so you see the difference? A little bit here rather than there. There you can do, but you have to have a lot more flexibility in the hip joint to be able to do that. So I find that for most people, it's a little easier to think about foot and tibia at right angle. And that will give you the better, easier alignment for you. And then the other thing that we're thinking about, Satu Bandhasana, our weight is on our head and the sides of our feet. Those are the only two pieces of the body that are touching the floor. So everything in between, you have to feel this sense of co-contraction, all the muscles coming onto the body. Of course, there's a sense of ease so that you can move to make this kind of arcing movement so that you're not, it's not rigid, stone rigid, that can also cause problems in the neck. So the feet are in this position. We're gonna bring our hands like Purvotanasana arms and then we're making a diamond shape with our legs, but like a long diamond. Right, so not too close. Okay, that's one of the biggest mistakes people make is their feet are too close, and then when they lift up, their legs are like this. Okay, so if you can bring your feet a little further away, and then what to lift up, I, I just want to show this. I hope you guys can see on camera because there's two ways to lift up, and one engages the muscles, and one is just kind of doing not very much. Okay, so I'm going to do the not very much one first, which is, oh, I just lift my hips and straighten my legs, right? Lift the hips, straighten the legs. You know, I'm using joints to do that. Whereas if I want to get my muscles involved, I'm pushing my feet away as I straighten my legs. And then this gets the muscles to pull on to, wait, my hands are too close. So as I push away, it co-contracts all my muscles, okay? So then I can feel a difference, even if you can't really, initially, this you might not see the difference, but I can feel inside that all my muscles, the quads, the, the hamstrings, the quads, the adductors, the buttocks, everything is firming in. The kneecaps are trying to point out to the a little bit like up and out to the sides. Yeah, and squeeze on, lower belly squeezing in, buttocks squeezing in. Okay, so this is a really nice position. Even if you never do the full version, this is doing a lot of work on all the muscles in the lower body. So if everybody tried, then I'm gonna go to the upper body. Oh, your cat's so nice, Elena. Oh, <laughs> so cute. <laughs> I love that kind of cat. Okay, so second part. So I'm gonna maybe show this. Can you guys see there? I hope you guys can see. So the second part is as if I'm gonna go into Urdhva Dhanurasana. My legs are like Urdhva Dhanurasana legs. And what I want to do here is strengthen my neck and my upper back so that it's supporting me. So I can put, and you have to be careful with the hair, especially anybody who has long hair, because if it slips, it does these little tweaks in the neck. And this happened to me, so it's really not very nice. Your neck gets stiff for a day or two. So the hands on the mid thighs, you push into the back of the head, you push into the feet, you co-contract all the muscles, and you're trying to lift the body from the floor. So let me show. So no hands involved, right? And so I'm lifting, I don't know if you can see with my t-shirt. So my, see, everything is off the floor here. Okay, so it's a little harder than it looks, 
but this is the test if you're strong enough to do that position. So everybody can try, I'll try to watch. <laughs> Some of you don't wanna try or am I frozen again? I might be frozen again. Okay, then the second objective is we start kind of like a matsyasana, like a fish pose. So you come up and you lift your chest, you bring the back of the head on the floor, but you make sure the back of the neck is nice and long. The chin is kind of in more in a neutral position. The hands are on the thighs, and then we can watch first. Then I push into my hands, I push into my head, my arms have come straight, so it's helping me arc. And then I press the feet, and then inhale, come up. And then you notice my neck kind of stays in a neutral position, and it's my legs that are kind of guiding me to roll the head, right? Like a little ball rolling, okay? So it's my legs, my belly, that's doing all that work, okay? So you need to have this ability to be able to ever do the full version. Do you want to try it? Separate the feet a little wider. Get more strength in the legs. That's good, Julia, that's perfect. So you just roll a few times so you feel this sensation. What does that feel like to roll on the head? And actually, um, I find that it starts to feel quite nice. If you're doing it properly, it feels quite nice on the, the pressure points of the head. And it's really good for the neck if you do this really well. It strengthens the neck. I've found that, you know, I don't really, I don't do the full version anymore, but um, this kind of thing usually feels good on my neck. Um, Christoph, if you're using that block, you have to bring the block higher, not between the knees, but between the mid thighs. Okay, so then the next version you can do, if you want to try, if you're not freaked out too much by this pose, <laughs> otherwise you can do like Christoph and just go to some back bending positions. Okay, so the next position is trying to bring the two together. Okay, so we might not lift up. You're going to see what's happening. Um, we start the legs in this nice diamond shape, and then we lean back, and we get into this little bit of a matsyasana. Okay, but I want my neck to be neutral. And then from here, I can use my arms. Okay, so technically, we're not using the arms in this position, but as we don't have anybody there to lift you, um, well, I could lift you, but I can't lift everybody on screen. So you could use your hands, and then you push into the hands, push into the sides of the feet, like you're gonna straighten the legs like this, push into the head, and then you can lift yourself up here, right? And then you can hold, my elbows are supporting me, okay? So that there's not so much weight in the head. And then when you come down, come down easily. Okay, so you decide if you want to give that a shot or not. I can watch to see if I see anything that looks a little out of craziness. Uh, Jean, you're going too far in your neck. Sorry, but you have that flexibility, but uh, I don't know, trust me. <laughs> I used to do this where my head was on, the forehead was on the floor here. And I think that wasn't really the most smartest thing for my neck. Okay. Yes, that's... Feel like you're saying yes with the chin when you're in this. So even though you're... Just a tiny bit. Really, that was too much done. Just like this sense of chin in, even though it's not actually doing that. Okay, when you're finished... Come down, bring the knees in, and then take your hands behind the head, use your arms, 
pull your chin in, pull your knees and your elbows towards one another. We'll stretch out the back here. Put the soles of the feet on the floor. Let the back of the head come to the floor. Bring your elbows alongside the waist, fingertips pointing up towards the sky. Press into the arm bones. Lift the hips from the floor. Try to keep the feet parallel. And come down. Inhale, you can come up to a second back bend. If you're doing Urdhva Dhanurasana, I'm not gonna be talking all that through, so you can do that on your own if, you're, if you already know this. Separate the feet a little bit, Aki. So the feet should be about hip width apart. And then drop the inner thighs. The inner thighs towards the floor. And when you come down, you can try one more. That's good, Beatrice. That's really good. Perfect. down like this so you can straighten your legs or keep them softly bent and then bring your legs towards you stretching up the back Rock up to a sitting position and come to a cross-legged position that feels comfortable for you. And you're welcome to come into Padmasana or half Padmasana or any other cross-legged position. You can put on a sweater or some socks or you've got a blanket there. Elongate the spine, close the eyes. Bring yourself inwards. Feel like the spine is getting longer. The jaw is relaxing. The facial muscles are relaxing. And concentrate on the sound of Ujjayi, allowing the thoracic cage to move fully with each breath. You can make the inhales and exhales the same length and try to make them a little longer than what we were doing while we're moving through the yoga asanas. Try to firm in Mulabandha, Uddiyana Bandha. So these points between the hip bones here this is trying to stay firm, still.
settle. Trying to keep the mind focused on that sound of Ujjayi. And slowly trying to keep the eyes closed. Try to have as little movement as possible. Coming to lie down for Shavasana. Here we're letting go of the breath. No more ujjayi. The breath is becoming natural. Slowly, slowly, the breath is becoming quieter and quieter. Less and less movement with the breathing. All the muscles are melting away. Allowing the mind to just settle and dissolve.
taking your time to awaken the body. You'll eventually find yourself up into a sitting position. You can stay there if you like. <laughs> I'll close the meeting. Do the closing mantra. And using that mantra, send out peace, love, happiness out to all beings everywhere. Swasti Prajavya.